Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Round Hay United Reformed Church for our worship on Sunday the 14th of March, the fourth Sunday of Lent, and of course Mothering Sunday. Our theme for this morning is Love Light. Love Light. We reflect on not less love, like some diet version, but the light of the love of God that shone through Jesus. We're using prayers and resources from Roots this morning, and our Bible readings today are from Psalm 107 and John chapter 3. We have two hymns to share with you this morning, Longing for Light from the Church Hymnary and Breathe on Me Breath of God, which can be found in Rejoice and Sing at 295. I'm here for you in church along with Mark and Mandy, Joy and Sheila, who are helping me with today's live worship. So let us begin our worship together. We light a light in the name of the God who creates life. We light a light in the name of the Savior who loves life. We light a light in the name of the Spirit who is the fire of life. Amen. We continue through Lent with our reflections this week, looking at living in tension. We're taking resources from here and there from Roots which reflects on the global pandemic in the context of Jesus' journey to the cross. So let's hear again from the Gospel of Mark. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests has handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Let's pray together. Wise and all-knowing God, we cannot fathom how others think, and we cannot see the full picture that you can see. Please guide us, give us discernment and courage as we learn when to stand up and contest something and when to try and live together with tension. Give us your heart for justice and your patience to make it happen. We pray, amen.
Let us pray. God of creation and order, be with us as we gather for worship. Help us to think carefully about the choices we make and the people we look up to. Lead us through the confusions and temptations of this world and teach us to look up to the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, for guidance and inspiration. Lord God, we approach your light, the light that shines in the darkness of our world, the light that searches the darkness of our hearts, the light that banishes the shadows that surround us, the light that causes some to turn away because they prefer the darkness. But we lift our faces to your light and walk towards you. Lord, we approach your light. Amen. And a prayer of confession. Lord our God, your light has flooded the world, but we have turned away, preferring darkness. You have lifted up your Son that we might be forgiven, but we have turned away, preferring to remain sinful. You have offered us the gift of eternal life, but we have turned away, preferring the pleasures of earthly life. Forgive us, O Lord, as we bow our heads before you. We do not turn away any longer. We lift our faces to seek your light. We lift our eyes to see your Son. We lift our hearts to live in you and for you forever. Amen. And we join together to say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, while some of us were sat through the meeting of Synod yesterday, Marcus and Matthew were so happy that Messy Church was back again this month. They love the crafts and listening about Palm Sunday. And of course, the story will continue in Messy Church with Easter next month. Leeds United Reformed Churches are still meeting online for their Lent course, and that continues this week, either on Tuesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, or Thursday evening. If you haven't joined any so far, uh, feel free still to join in. We're exploring Jesus' prayers to his Father as he drew closer to the cross. And our creative challenge is already drawing in uh, some wonderful pieces of work. Thank you to all those who have submitted something so far. Uh, this is our challenge for Lent and Easter, to create something connected with Lent or Easter, either as a family or as a solo effort. Um, we will show them online on Easter Day. Uh, we're appealing to all ages, all abilities of the St. Andrew's family. Be creative, but most importantly, have fun. Please send all your contributions to the usual address, media at standrews.cc. And Michael has updated uh, our preparations for the Easter Garden. Don't forget that will be coming in Holy Week. John Bailey has been very busy making plates and goblets for the Last Supper station uh, using his lathe. It's, as you can see, a real labor of love. Look at that. Now, we suspect that the wood that was used for the plates, which was found in the cellar, might have come from the sanctuary itself when it was refurbished several years ago. 
Uh, so the wood could be as old as the church itself. But they look absolutely awesome, John. Thank you. We have one birthday this week, and that's Lauren, who is seven, actually, today. So happy birthday to you, Lauren. Now, before Joy reads to us from Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3, and verses 17 to 22, about God's steadfast love, and from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. We're going to hear or have our first hymn for this morning, Longing for Light, We Wait in Darkness. A reminder that even in the darkest times, we can rely on the love of God through Jesus to be our light. Christ be our light. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. 
Some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind, and let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. And then from the New Testament, the Gospel according to John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they've not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and the people of darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Thank you, Joy. Now, as it's Mothering Sunday, I want to share with you a short story to remind us that a parent's love is never something to be taken lightly. But it also reminds us of the cost of a parent's love. You might have heard this story in some form before, but it is a great story. It's called The Letter. Not many people are christened Clementina. I suppose it's hardly a fashionable name nowadays. But this story is about a girl who was called just that. That's Clementina, not just that. Clementina was, on the whole, a very charming and likable 11-year-old. She could even be extremely kind and thoughtful on occasions, as you will see from our story. But alongside that, there was also an ever so slightly devious side to her character. Now, Clementina lived with her mum, her dad, her brother and sister in a pleasant suburb of a large city. In addition, her grandma lived not that far away and Clementina was particularly fond of her. So she was often round there on visits after school. At the time that this story happened, it was the week of her grandma's 70th birthday. Clementina had decided that she would buy a present. 
and she knew just the right thing to get. She'd seen it in the local co-op. It was large and a highly decorated box of delicious McCrum's homemade chocolate biscuits wrapped up with a beautiful red bow. Now you might think that this was a strange idea for a present, but the truth is that these were her grandma's favorites. And also, incidentally, they were Clementina's, but that of course had nothing to do with her choice. There was, however, one snag. This beautifully decorated present cost five pounds 99, and unfortunately Clementina had already spent all her pocket money for that week. She hadn't been able to resist a bumper edition of her regular music magazine, especially as it carried a picture of her favorite celebrity on the front cover. But this meant she had no money left over. So what was she to do? What was she to do? Clementina had a good think and came up with her big idea. After a week during which she was particularly and, I must confess, unusually helpful around the house, Clementina sat down on Friday in the evening to write a letter to her mum. And this is what it said. Dear mum, here is my bill for last week's work. Cleaning shoes, ATP. Helping with the shopping, one pound 20. Feeding the dog, seven days at 20p a day, one pound 40. Washing up, sometimes, one pound. Laying the table each night, 60p. Tidying up my room, 99p. The total, as keen mathematicians among you will have worked out, was five pounds and 99 pence. She signed it, Love, Clementina. She placed this letter in an envelope and left it on the sideboard so that her mum would see it and read it after Clementina had gone to bed. The following morning, Clementina came down to breakfast and she glanced over at the sideboard and to her delight saw the letter had been opened and that another letter addressed to her lay in its place. She opened it quickly and, you might guess what's coming, this is what she read. Dear Clementina, enclosed is five pounds 99 and many thanks for all your help. Now, here is my bill. Feeding and clothing you for 11 years, naught pence. Nursing you through measles, chicken pots, etc., naught pence. Transport to brownies, swimming, ballet classes, parties, etc., naught pence. Cost of holidays and entertainment for 11 years, naught pence. Total, naught pence. Love, mum. Of course, suddenly Clementina felt very humbled indeed. And for the first time she realized just what her mother's love really involved. And that it was all given for free. Clementina learned a big lesson that day. And the next time Mothering Sunday came round, it somehow meant a great deal more to her than ever before, as she thought back to that letter her mother had written. It was a letter, rather like her name, never to be forgotten. A mother's love, or the love of anyone who watches over us and tends us as we grow, is never something we should take for granted. Sadly, today, on Mothering Sunday, there will be those who haven't been able to see their mother over the past year and still won't be able to today. Today, there are mothers 
who haven't hugged their children in over a year. Today, there will be those stuck, who've been stuck at home in the same house with their mother in lockdown over this past year, and maybe a lack of appreciation has crept in on both sides. Today, there will be those of us who are children who haven't seen our mothers for many, many years, and for whom Mother's Day is always a difficult time. And today, this year perhaps more than any other, we have become aware of those who are like a mother to us. When we need that special kind of loving care, in the darkest and most difficult times in our lives. As I said earlier, today's Bible passage gave rise to our theme for this morning, love light. But this is not love light as in some kind of light, lightweight or diet version of love. Today's gospel passage includes one of the most often quoted verses in the Bible, John chapter 3, verse 16, from Jesus' conversation with a curious Pharisee, Nicodemus. It reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. That passage which expresses extreme parental love, not just for his only son, but for the paradox that is all the children of the world, all of us. And that verse is followed immediately by the reminder that it was to be through the huge sacrifice of that very son that God's love would save the world. Now Nicodemus, who we meet earlier in that chapter, was a Jewish leader who was also a Pharisee. As a leader of the Jewish people, Nicodemus would have had a high regard for the teachings of Moses, both because of the law that was given through Moses, but also because people saw God through Moses. Both Nicodemus and Jesus knew that the story of the bronze serpent was part of Moses interceding with God for the people. Following the whole big issue of Israel straying from following God's ways and instead making and worshipping a golden calf, which we can read about in the Old Testament. So Moses prays for the people. And God gives him the symbol of a bronze serpent wound around a pole, a symbol of healing, a symbol still used by hospitals to this day. But it might also be understood that this bronze serpent was a symbol of deliverance, a symbol of God's saving love revealed in Jesus on the cross. So Jesus likens his being lifted up onto the cross to Moses lifting up this bronze serpent on a pole in the wilderness. Jesus, too, intercedes for the people, including those like us who later read the gospel by believing in Jesus, so we receive healing in his name. Now, it's uncertain if you read through that chapter with that conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, where that conversation ends and where the Gospel writer John's own comments and reflections pick up the story. But from verse 16 onwards, we see the Gospel writer picking up themes from his prologue, the first chapter of John, all about light and God coming into the world. And he directly invites his readers to choose light rather than darkness. And of course, we remember in that that Nicodemus originally came to visit Jesus by night. He did it in secret, in the dark. But as we will soon hear of him again, he appeals to the law on behalf of Jesus, 
for the right to be given a fair hearing. And later on, after Jesus' death, he brings costly myrrh and aloes for Jesus' burial. Jesus speaks to Nicodemus in this moment and speaks of being sent because of God's love to offer life to the world. He uses that imagery of light and darkness to explain this concept of judgment. Those who do wrong things avoid the light because it reveals what they are doing. But those who, are, who do what is good are true and are attracted to the light. But Nicodemus asks questions because let's face it, some of what Jesus says is confusing. But Nicodemus's questions are honest questions. So how can, can anyone be born again after having grown old? Or how can these things be, he asks. He glimpses God's presence in Jesus. Or perhaps more than that, he glimpses something of the light of God's eternal love through him. And so, Nicodemus distances himself from other Jewish leaders, later asking why Jesus should be judged without a hearing. And Nicodemus joins Joseph of Arimathea, the secret disciple, in giving Jesus a burial. So Nicodemus' story reminds us of the importance of those who ask curious questions or who are brave enough to do something different, even if, like Clementina in the story of that letter earlier, they are a bit misguided. There is perhaps no single verse, it is said in Scripture, that is more repeated uh, in, than the opening verse of our psalm today, Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. This single verse, often used as the beginning and ends of prayers, is a reminder to us on this day of the extreme power of God's parenting love. An extreme love, like a mother's love, that has always been there to light our way. Amen. We ask for the light of Christ's love to fill us to overflowing in how we live our lives day by day. And so let us think of that as we turn to our next hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
In our prayers of intercession, there is a response. To the words, let your light shine, the response is, and bring hope to your children. Let your light shine and bring hope to your children. And so we pray. Loving Lord, on the leaders of the nations as they make decisions about international relationships, especially on the leaders of China, Iran, Yemen, and Myanmar, let your light shine and bring hope to your children. On the leaders of the church as they make decisions about church opening and mission activities for Passion Tide and Easter, let your light shine and bring hope to your children. On teachers, teaching assistants, administrative staff and students as they settle back into schools. Let your light shine and bring hope to your children. On those making decisions concerning the vaccination program and the implementation of the roadmap to recovery, let your light shine and bring hope to your children. On those who feel isolated, those who are discriminated against, those who are ill in body or in mind, those who mourn loved ones, and today we pray especially for the family and friends of Sarah Everard, that they may find comfort and healing in you. Let your light shine and bring hope to your children. Loving Lord, we look up to you and trust that your light will guide us in the path of peace, justice and love. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sheila. And thank you for joining with St. Andrews today for our Sunday worship. Let us close in prayer. Lord of light, help us to look to you in the coming week. Guide us when the way ahead seems dark and full of obstacles. May we always give thanks, even in the darkest times, and enable us to shine as lights in the world. Amen. So Father, Son, and Spirit, source, light, and love, be with you and rest with you, this day, this night, and always. Amen.